Welcome to Science Fiction. I am Salim Sitarwala, and as always, I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Carl Eames. Carl, how are you today? Doing very well. Thanks for asking. And how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, today was a pretty eventful day at work. Busy as, as in not like bad and eventful, but just be busy as far as everything I had to do. And then, um, yeah. The weather is finally nice consistently. That's that's a plus. We haven't really had like too many days of like cold, chilly weather lately. Yesterday was a little rainy for a little bit, which was like, oh no, is this so what's going on? <laughs> and then luckily it uh it dried up uh and and, and became uh decent again. Um but yeah, I was uh work with you, man. How was uh driving those crazy people everywhere that they need to go going uh it's the crazy people on the road not the crazy people in my car is pretty much is how it goes but yesterday was so it wasn't i wouldn't say it was a bad start because it wasn't like me but it was just a weird like i i legit drove past either um debris from a recent car accident or an active car accident about three or four times within 20 minutes yesterday and to start my day in the morning it was like okay car accident just drive past to that like literally police officers are picking up the car parts and throwing them into a uh, garbage truck like a compact truck so i drove past that and then i was going to pick someone else and there was a three car accident at this intersection that picked that person up and drove past another one i'm like what's going on (laughs) like today is on a tuesday morning it's the weirdest thing to drive past all of that but that's just um uh, another day and this is all like in the streets not not on the highway or nothing oh wow that's uh that's pretty crazy yeah that's uh, a lot of carnage in such a short period of time (laughs) Um, Hopefully no one was hurt, but, uh, you know, definitely cars were totaled and same things were happening, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, busy enough for, it's like pretty typical for the summer. People are in and out of the city and construction is causing way more traffic than, uh, is necessary. And then that rain that we had yesterday add 30 minutes to every commute and yeah, it's yeah. fun. Yeah, rain is like annoying. Uh, like it shouldn't be that bad for the commuting ones, but like for some weird reason, the people just get crazy in the rain. I don't know why, but oh, anyways, uh, we do have a fun show today. Uh, we only are going to talk about one topic, and that's across the Spider Verse, uh, because Carl and I want to give our full attention to that. Uh, but before we get into that, we do want to announce uh, to all our listeners who've supported us for over a year now uh unfortunately this is going to be our last show um carl and i hate each other now no it's not because of that it's uh no it's uh you know it just time it's hard to do you know in the middle of the week for me personally it is i know carl is 
a lot, a lot more flexible than me, but it's just difficult for me to commit to a, a middle of week show um, uh, every week. And, and it just kind of got to a point where it was like, we we're skipping too many weeks. Um, so it just came to a point like, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to uh, try to keep forcing uh, random weeks to do it, uh, especially, and it's not fair to you to, for me not to be able to commit like that. So uh, unfortunately, at the moment, at least, maybe down the line, we never know, uh, we could come back. But for now, um, we are going to be uh, on a, what is it, hiatus? Is, it the, is that the right word? or? Uh, a, a siesta <laughs> siesta <laughs> uh so but we like i said uh we, we'll talk more about that later uh and uh, yeah let's uh let's get into uh, i don't know if you wanted to say anything before we get into the show actually um not pertaining to uh the the announcement I, it's not really a uh, it's kind of a fast flick i do want to mention because it's okay. uh it's it pertains to spider verse uh in a way okay. I, something i want to come back to later on um some recent news announced or just discovered i should say uh with deadpool 3 uh we already know you know it's gonna have wolverine hugh jackman is gonna be in that movie uh very prominently hopefully and i believe we already discussed that patrick stewart and ian mckellen were coming back to be xavier and magneto if we didn't we are, but we also have more uh, X Men coming back from that original Brian Singer run with uh, Fan P. Jensen's coming back as Gene, Holly Berry's coming back as Storm, James Marston's coming back as Cyclops. Uh, I believe that's all that I know of. We already know that the Colossus from the Deadpool movies is going to be in this movie as well. I don't know about the original Colossus or Iceman or uh, if Anna Paquin's going to be Rogue coming back or. It page will come back and, and and be Kitty Pride. I don't know any about that stuff, but at very least, Cyclops, uh, Storm, and um, uh, Magneto, Xavier, Wolverine, and uh, Gene will be in this upcoming Deadpool movie. Um, so, and you can actually see like Holly Berry on her Instagram has like she has her short hair again and is dyed white. Um, so she's got like her storm cut going right now so um they'll they are i'm pretty sure they are filming or starting to film getting ready for all of that pretty soon so yeah i I found that really um interesting that all of those characters are going to come back at least briefly yeah um that's yeah i mean you know i heard about like some of them coming back i didn't uh realize that james marzen was announced um, but I thought I remember him saying something about like how he would be open to being a part of MCU. Um, I'm glad, like, yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I'm I'm guessing there'll be like cameos. Uh, Probably, but, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see James fun. Marston be like full time Cyclops. I I already thought he was a perfect casting to begin with. Yeah, he was so underutilized uh, to begin with. He was, and I didn't like the uh, other guy that they got in. When they did like the younger right, Cyclops, right. I didn't really care for him um, as Cyclops. Um, but yeah, he he was a really good Cyclops, and I don't know like what they'll do. I mean, I'm guessing they're gonna try to get a younger person to play Cyclops because uh, depending on who they go with Wolverine, they're gonna want him to look like maybe a little older, but not old old. I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm just kind yeah, of Danny DeVito. Dan, you know, I've been saying, man, you gotta, <laughs> gotta get, you gotta get a little short guy to play, feisty little short guy to play Wolverine. Danny DeVito's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dinklage would be actually perfect for uh, Wolverine. Yeah, he's, he's a great uh, actor. Maybe, maybe a little <laughs> too short. I don't know. <laughs> no, you know it's funny actually. That, not to, not to uh, keep talking about other things except other than across the Spider Verse, but like. Like the whole concept of Wolverine's height has always been funny because if you read the comics, like in random like clips, the artist always draws him in different heights. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, there's clips where he's like two three inches taller than like someone that's five five, <laughs> and that's supposed to be like five five around that height. And right. then there's other other like drawings where he's like 
not as tall. So it's like it's it's always like I felt like the his height has always been like an interpretation of the the artist almost. Yeah, and it's not necessarily like he has to be five three, like and that's what he is. Like you know, it was never anything like that. I feel like so. Um, the height thing I think was always kind of like silly, but I suppose like I mean, what would they have that that I don't know if he's still rumored or not, but that Aaron um, Egerton or whatever, right? That he was like yeah. five eight, so at least he would be like the shortest. Well, the shortest. Um, Hugh Jackman's been the only Wolverine, so I shouldn't say the shortest Wolverine today because he's been the only Wolverine. It's still a true Jackman's statement. Ever. Yeah, it, it is technically it's a true statement, but, that, but not like there's like a bunch of Wolverines. It's not like it's like Batman where he's been a bunch of people played him. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, th- that was just funny to me. Like people always fighting about his height. It's like it's always been interpretation of the artist, so it doesn't really matter. Like just get a good actor, and that's all. That's all you care about. Um, but anyways. Uh, let, let's get into our conversation about Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, both of us saw it. Um, why don't we play the trailer first, and then we'll get into our thoughts and then the other things that we want to cover about the movie. What's up, My name is Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. Oh, yeah. You were supposed to be here at five. All right, whatever. Whatever? Wow. Whatever? So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. <laughs> That's not funny. Don't, don't do that. Miles' grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? Ooh, okay. Miles. Are you trying to... Mira, I saw him see He's lying to you, and I think you know it. What's up, danger? Miles! Want to get out of here? Oh, when? So wait a minute. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it? Who's the new guy? This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Miguel (laughs) O'Hara. The whole thing was his idea. What's the guy got to do to join this spider team? You can never be part of this. Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 1999-99. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter. Miles. Mayday. You have a baby? I have a baby. I'll take it from here. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saved in every world. <gasps> Send me home. I can't do that. I can do both! Spider-Man always... Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now! You can't run forever, kid! I can't lose one more friend. Your belt isn't what we talked about! You know? You have no idea what you're doing! Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. stop Spider-Man. And then I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died? All right, that was the trailer for Across the Spider-Verse. Um, let's get into our thoughts of the movie first before we get into a little Easter eggs or whatever other uh, slides that we want to cover. Uh, Carl, I'll let you go first. What did you think about uh, the movie? Sure. Um, so um, this is a fantastic movie. Um, absolutely. Like... Without a doubt, one of the best, if not the best, Spider-Man movie. And we said this before with the last, with Into the, Into the Spider-Verse, that that, that was uh-huh. the best Spider-Man movie. At least uh, a lot of people who, I think pretty much anyone that's a Spider-Man fan that saw Into the Spider-Verse thought Into the Spider-Verse was the best Spider-Man movie. It was just a shame that not a lot of people went to go see Into the Spider-Verse because it was animated and 
uh, it didn't do nearly as as well uh, initially as you know, like a Spider-Man wasn't that ad- it wasn't or... that well advertised either. I feel like they didn't really like push it that much. Um, yeah, it, I, I would say it was pretty casual. Like there were ads and stuff, but not like a big marketing push. And uh, even like merchandise for the movie for the original movie didn't come out until well after uh, the movie, like t-shirts and toys and stuff like that. Um, where this movie is. Like it over the years again. That was 2017. It's still hard to believe it was that long ago. Um, but since then, this movie has done incredibly. Like the original movie did incredibly well through word of mouth and with time. And people said, like, no, you need to go watch Into the Spider Verse because Miles is awesome and is actually the best Spider Man movie, better than the Tobey Maguire stuff, the Andrew Garfield, and the Tom Holland stuff. Now we have Across the Spider-Verse, and this movie is better than that. It really is. It, it, it truly, truly is. And I think, in part, yeah, it is building off of what was established in the first movie. So part of that perception of it being so good is based off of no, your knowledge of the first movie and um, your enjoyment of these characters and stuff from the first movie. But even on its own... Uh, it does a really good job of telling this tale. Um, sure, there's a little bit that it would help if you watch the first one, but st- if you watch this one and didn't watch the first one, I think you'd still be okay. It did enough uh, backstory and telling, uh, filling in some of the gaps in there, like with uh, the spots and with Gwen and with uh, with Miles and what he went through and uh, you know, you know him being the only Spider-Man in his reality because Peter, his his original Sp- Spider-Man, had died and stuff like that. Uh, all of that took place in the first movie uh, was still mentioned enough in this movie, so you didn't need to see every single detail uh, to, to pick up on everything. But still, it's a very long movie. Um, I, I could have gone for longer, though, because every moment of it was so enjoyable. Um, but one of the best things I absolutely loved about the movie um, was like right away, like already familiar with the art style and the, the frames and stuff like that and how they uh, animate the characters. But, um, you know, the art style is one thing that's great, but the art direction um, and just the direction of the film got me right away when they were going into the beginning of the movie with Gwen's origin story. Um, and they were going into that. Uh, but it was really when she was like uh, drumming with the Mary Janes and she was playing the drums and they're playing the music and they're like, hey, what's wrong, girl? And stuff like that. And she walks off. And then on the top frame, they have like top of the screen. They have like it's separated and they have uh, I forget if it was the wide shot up top and then the close shot at the bottom. But it was like they were still animating at the same time. Uh, and I was like, man, that's like a really cool shot. And I think they did that several times throughout the movie. Uh, and I was like, okay, we're really going to see if they're doing stuff like this, this early, we're really going to see some really great direction throughout this entire movie. If they're doing this now. And that was the case. Um, so many different animation styles, like with the vulture, um, the whole Lego thing, some of the live action stuff, but which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about later. Um, all of that just being integrated in at the same time. This movie was just one big flex, like all of these animators showing off all of the skill, all, all of the polish that they put into this movie and all of the talent that they have is just being showcased in this movie. So um, an absolutely outstanding movie. I can't wait to watch again. Um, one of the best of the year, if, if not the best movie that we've watched probably um, all year. And I can't even think of a a movie being better than this for the rest of the year. So, um, yeah, absolutely love this thing. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're spot on. So like, yeah, I thought the animation was breathtaking alone. I was like, that alone is worth the price of admission. The visuals are great with a lot of dynamic displays that take you like through a journey of the various dimensions that they're going through. With the various different spider verses um the storyline is very captivating it follows the, the growth of miles morales 
you know, like as he's embracing his role as the the hero, like because he's come a long way since that first movie, uh, being uh, Spider Man, uh, and how he's navigating the challenges that, and and self discoveries that he's going through, um, you know, kind of finding the place uh, in his world and in his own skillful way, and all the lessons that he's learned from the first movie that go into this one. Um, I thought the voice cast deliver exceptional performances too, bringing the characters like to life and with a lot of enthusiasm. Like a lot of times with animation movies, like you never, you always wonder how, you always that that you always wonder how that will come out with a lot of the, the actors, especially when they're not trained voice actors. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you, the, the you know obviously the they've had practice not doing it, but I think. They sell it really well. Obviously, Samik Moore is great as Miles Morales. Um, the, the, it seems like they, you know, it's it's funny. It's funny to say because you can't tell with with when when actors are acting on screen, you can tell the chemistry is there. But it seems like at least him and Haley Stetton, Stettenfield have some kind of good chemistry on on. Uh, like with each other and i don't know how they do the voice acting sometimes because sometimes i know they do it all in the same room mm-hmm. so they can play off of each other and then other times they don't because of time constraints because of scheduling and things like that right right uh, but it seemed like they really worked well together in all their scenes together that they had uh that's spider gwen and and um and uh, uh miles morales together um so i thought that was that was really good as well uh, again, again, it strikes a perfect balance between like the humor, the action, a lot of heart in the movie. Um, like, I, like I said, the humor is actually really well. Um, so yeah, overall, I think like all the praise that this movie is, is getting, it's well deserved. It's like everyone's saying it's great. Yeah, it is great, and a hundred percent, you should go watch it in the theater. I would say. Like don't don't miss out on this movie in the theater. Or wait for it at home. I and mean, you can obviously if you don't have the time. It is what it is. But like, I would recommend going to the theater to watch this for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of those few got to see in the movie theater um, experiences. It really is what worth it. I wasn't sure I because I actually when I was buying the tickets, I didn't even pay attention. Is this in three D? Do they have three D of this? I believe they do. Um, some scenes might be cool in 3D, just because, like, yeah. especially some of the, the the chase scenes in the in the toward the end, uh, would have been pretty cool in 3D, and especially the some of the fight scenes uh, would have been cool in 3D. Um, but yeah, they they definitely had it 3D, and and they had an IMAX as well. Okay, that'd be cool. And I saw. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you want to get into anything? Uh, start off with all the other stuff. Uh yeah sure um well you had uh let's go ahead and start with this you had Jameson right right yeah um I just think it's cool that <laughs> essentially uh J K Simmons is J Jonah in every Spider Verse <laughs> like you know sometimes there's different people playing different roles uh yeah, it's yeah. just funny that he's always it's always him and it's always his voice the Lego Verse uh obviously uh the toby mcguire universe the uh, i don't know if he's he's not in andrew garfield is he mm, i can't remember if he's in those movies he's not no, in those movies no uh if he's a tom holland and then again in into the spider verse j jonah jameson is uh or across the spider verse j jonah jameson is played by uh jk simmons i just thought it's really funny um and it's cool i like it because he's perfect he's perfect as j jonah jameson he's like there's, yeah, yeah. there's no one else who else can you get to play j jonah jameson except for jake simmons yeah like mean, if you got top 10 perfect casting in all comic book movies he's definitely like top five yeah 100 percent. i just think that's funny uh it's cool that they 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 stick with him no matter what they do with spider-man it's he's the one playing jason uh j jonah um so i do want to um go back to talk about a little bit of uh the beginning of the movie uh like i said it was more focused on uh gwen's origin for the most part like we open the movie and we don't even see miles we don't even talk about miles 
or not we talk around the idea of miles because it's all basically gwen's perspective for the first i don't know what 20 almost 30 minutes of the movie long movie a uh, really great long movie but one of the things uh just a personal thing i don't know if i've ever said it on podcasts but i always almost i want to say hate but i hate origin stories because uh usually i already know it right mm-hmm. uh i already know the lore i already know that batman's you know family bruce and uh or excuse me thomas and martha wayne uh shot by joe chill in, in uh crime alley i already know mm-hmm. superman i already know spider-man i already know all of this stuff so when i see it in a movie or a cartoon or a video game or whatever it is it's just like uh you know i'm tired of seeing it i'm tired of hearing it uh, and even uh, movies that have already like never or should say have never established uh like a live action version or anything like that um that stuff still bores me like even like like, like the x-men mm-hmm. movies the uh daredevil movies which is actually like a great example of uh of what i'm getting at uh here in the Live, the Netflix, formerly Netflix Daredevil, they didn't do Daredevil's origin right away. And even the part of his origin that they did do, it was very brief. And it was later on in the season, it was like halfway through the first season that they actually mentioned his, uh, you know, father and going into his backstory and how he got his abilities and stuff. That was way more engaging because just going straight into the action, straight into uh daredevil being daredevil and you just talk about it later and this what they did with tom holland as spider-man covering uh just throwing him right into civil war and not skipping over the uncle ben stuff skipping over uh all of his early days and just doing a quick little yeah you already know this part stuff and then here with spider-verse with Gwen, we got Gwen right away and into the Spider Verse, and we she was already Spider Woman. She already was better at being a Spider Person than Miles was. She has experience. She knows what she's doing. She can fight and all of that stuff. Now in the second movie, we're getting her at origin, and they, they do give it to us right away. But this now is important because we've already invested our time into this character, and people have already invested their uh, like. They're, they already know like okay now i know who this character is but i don't know how that character is and giving us that origin which was really very accurate to the comic book origin for gwen um same thing like peter parker in her universe this is a different universe than the the main marvel comic book verse and her peter parker did not be become bitten by a spider it was uh, him becoming uh, the lizard. lizard, he experimented on himself, and she didn't know he had turned, and they had this big fight, and all of a sudden he's dead, and she finds out it was him all along, and then she gets blamed. And they they did a really good job of of showing all of that off and explaining how she became like who her her uncle Ben is basically Peter. Um, mm. And then another thing about that is. They took a lot of the colors and the art style from those early comics of Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen. At at the time, she was Spider Gwen. She's still kind of called that, but her name, her title right now, actually, I think is Ghost Spider. Yeah, it's Ghost Spider. But she's gone from us calling her Spider Gwen and then Spider Woman. Now she's Ghost Spider, right? But in general, the art style from those early spider gwen comic books you can just look at the covers and and flip open the pages they put that directly in this movie so all of the pinks and all of the reds and oranges and the whites and all of that stuff that was prominent in her origin in this movie is exactly how it was looking in her comic book so i thought that was really awesome to see like i spotted it right away yeah that's uh that's true. Yeah. Like, I, I like, like the everything that did with that was really smoothly done. It wasn't like they didn't linger on it too long. They explained it pretty quickly and efficiently, uh, and then that they can move into the movie and explain what's going on, so you understand why she is going to be running away essentially, because 
she's kind of running away from her father, um, who is uh, initially he kind of is like shocked by what he finds out that she's you know uh, ghost spider or spider when and the spider person that's he's been hunting, and yeah, like I said, uh, it it was really well done. I agree with that for sure. Um, the next thing uh, I thought it was perfect. I love the casting of the Scar Scarlet Spider. Um, th so they had Andy Samberg voices uh, character, and it was hilarious because so in the comics of, and I'm sure you know this too, Carl. But in the comics, you know that uh, Ben Riley, who plays Spider Man, he's a clone of the original Spider Man, the original Peter Parker, six one six Peter Parker. Um from the clone saga controversies and the, the arc of the 90s that, that was a comic series that that happened so and ben riley he's always constantly agonizing about his memories and his past and 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 and, 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 and especially even in the current era like he's kind of do that but i love how they kind of they kind of pushed it to even more him being even more melodramatic and like when he's leaning against the wall he's like he's like in so much angst about it uh it was just really a fun funny that the way they did it and then he's always like what, what was later on when he goes with uh spider-man 2099 he's like all brooding and stuff too then um but yeah it just uh i thought that was perfect i i love how they you know accentuated the angst and made it even like like a little uh, uh comic relief in a sense yeah I, I really dug that too i i really um ben is one of my favorite spider-man like when i first started reading um spider-man comic books it was right around the clone saga time so it, he was scarlet spider at that time um and then shortly thereafter like maybe within a year or two he became full-on spider-man and that's my favorite costume like my actual like his spider-man costume when he was spider-man is my favorite all-time number one favorite costume uh of all spider-man and i read like you know during that time it would you know up until his death uh, spoiler alert uh, up until his death i read more spider-man comics with ben riley as spider-man than i read spider-man comic books with peter parker as spider-man up until his death so uh i was a big fan of ben riley at the time and still am uh or at least of that era i know he's gone through a, a lot of wild changes over the years but i haven't been able to keep up with all of that uh but one thing i really was digging is that they gave him basically the art style in the sh in the movie from how he looked at the time in in those clone saga years um uh, a lot of cell shading I, I would say like this is just a comic book art style put into a movie and animated uh and then that is what ben riley looks like uh, in the movie so um i was really digging that uh, big time the way his eyes are um you know the just the, the cell shading and stuff like that the line the line work and it just looks super cool i do wish that his like when he took his mask off that he, he looked a little bit more like uh, the comic book version, I think it was it's still a little stylized. It, it wasn't terrible, but uh, yeah. I do wish he looked a little bit more like uh, comic book Ben, like very prominent blonde hair and stuff like that. Right. But, you know, being a little picky, I guess. Yeah. I think they kind of made him look a little bit like Andy Sandberg. Yeah, um, maybe. I think that's what they ended up going with. But yeah, I just love I love I love that they pushed that like with him being so like angsty. It was hilarious. I cracked up so hard when they had, when he came on uh, on scene for that. Um, I I I can't remember. Did you put the Spider Punk picture or die? Because I know I wanted to talk about Spider Punk too. I put the picture the maskless. You did the other one. Okay. Um, you did. You yeah. Did this you want to start off? Uh, okay. how about you, you do that? Out? I'm going to take care of this dog really quick. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Spot Punk is awesome. Like I, so I personally don't have a lot of background on him for the comic side, 
but uh he is easily one of the best parts about this movie like he the way he uh comes on scene played by uh daniel uh, kaluuya uh voiced by daniel kaluuya, kaluuya i should say um yeah he's perfect like he's like that the anti-establishment uh anti-capitalist spider punk uh spider-man essentially um and you kind of get the sense right away that he's one of the people that's going to be important for this movie in a sense um and yeah i just love it and it makes me want to read more about spider punk uh so yeah th those are my thoughts on spider punk for sure and i think i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna dwell into more spider punk stuff uh personally when i when i get a chance i think carl I think a little bit of that I would are you back carl i just got back oh okay I'm yeah, I was just say, saying how I really loved uh, Spider Punk. Like he was uh, like a, like a, like being so anti-establishment and anti-capitalist. My he's my anti-imperialist uh, Spider Man. And I I saw like, and I was also saying like I don't have a lot of background on Spider Punk because I haven't really read any of this stuff. Uh, but I want to now for sure. <laughs> like <laughs> and that and then Daniel Kaluuya like was awesome playing him. Uh, but yeah, I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And, and and I was also saying like how you can tell right away when he comes on onto the scene when they're kind of talking about it, he's gonna be important as far as what this movie uh how this to see how this movie plays out, he's gonna be an important part of it. I just love the line because Miles basically said what we were all thinking. It's like, how are you even cooler when you take the mask off? Like I was yeah. literally was like, Yeah, that, that wow, I wasn't expecting because I don't think he, I don't think we saw what he looked like before in any of the trailers, or maybe I wasn't paying mm. attention. But uh, I was like, "Damn, he looks badass." <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't personally know of him uh, that well. Like, I haven't read outside of the actual Spider Verse comic, which was like very brief. Um, I don't know much about him as a character. Um, but I'm interested in seeing what direction they go in with. Um, with this uh movie and you know the next movie and stuff and um uh, like i was very like a little turned off when he kind of bowed out at the uh, like middle way mm -hmm. of the movie um yeah I, well, I, mean, I, I wanted him i wanted to see more of him and i was like oh, oh he's gonna okay, be okay. gone right it was, it was it was i like him a lot and i was like oh he's gonna be not in the movie anymore i mean you know, obviously there's reasons, and we found that out at the end of the movie. So I assume he'll be in the next movie as well. Okay. Um, but I definitely wanted more of him, and I, he was my favorite character in the whole movie. So um, yeah, I, he's just super dope. And uh, we, which I don't have a particular slide of him. Maybe we can real quick chat. I guess he's in this picture a little bit. Uh, Spider-Man India as well had yeah. a pretty. Uh, pretty good s amount of scenes as well and there's another character that i don't know anything about personally so it was really cool that they gave us a really good and quick uh, unless you weren't paying attention maybe it went a little too fast uh, origin for him he just like went through everything of okay. like who he is where he's from what is you know his life is like and how you know how his powers and all this stuff um I'm not sure exactly how his web shooters work because it was kind of interesting because I guess he has like little bangles or maybe yeah. the web shooters or whatever, but he looks like he was like throwing them. And then I wasn't quite following exactly how the seems web like, was out. Yeah, it kind of seems like he almost uses the bangles as a weapon too. Right. Yeah, like kind of like a weapon to like, or like things to like hook onto things with and um, and then kind of hit like hit his opponents with or something. That's what it seemed like. Um, but yeah, his was fun too. Like hit like with his hair and like the like like, per, like right, yeah. amazing quaff that he has. <laughs> right, uh, per perfect and, hair. And and and, it, and him not hiding it on a mask, leaving it hanging out. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, it's and obviously that scene becomes an important part of the movie. Uh, we find out later on because of the canon like the whole the, the theme of the movie is a lot about ends up being about canon moments and 
uh, and, and in there, Inspector Singh, who plays his um, his girlfriend's father, who's the Singh, uh, the Singh, the Inspector, and in that love, or the uh, or the uh, Captain uh, Stacy of of that universe, if you will, uh, he is supposed to die in that like scene that they show, um, but he obviously uh, Miles saves him. So. But yeah, it was uh, it was a really fun scene, and I I don't have a lot. I don't know if this makes me a bad Indian, but I have not had a lot of background on on Spider uh, uh, Man from uh, the in, from India, so uh, I'll, I'll probably get a little more familiar with him too. Uh, but it was kind of cool. Like so, they they created the, the was they called it what Mumbatan. Um, that was the city that he lives in, kind of like a Mumbai and Manhattan mix. Okay. That's what it sounds like, Mumbatan. That's a, I don't know, uh, I don't know that what what, what the, where they came up with that. Maybe there's a background more into it that I'd have to look up. But that's what the city is called that he uh, that he resides in. Okay, yeah, I mean it, it sounds cool too because th- at that point you can put it anywhere. It doesn't have to be. I don't know. Did they even did they even call him India like Spider Man India in the movie? Did they just use him with his name? I think so. I think so. I can't remember though. Um, I can't yeah, I think they just they... called him by his name. Did they? Because even on the on the IMDb credits, they 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 have uh, Karen Sony, uh, you know, and then they have the character's name. They don't have like um, all of the, they don't say Spider Gwen or Peter. Parker, or they don't say Spider Man; they say Peter Parker or Miles Morales, and so on. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me see here. But yeah, um, and then we—I guess we can talk about kind of a little bit more of the plot too, because we we haven't really gone over that. So the the whole canon events thing. I was wondering how you felt about that, because I thought that was like an interesting way to tie everyone together but also have a reason for the whole plot itself like is the first going over that uh, spider-man uh miles or should say um is he's like the apparition he's the outlier he's the like the the weird one-off thing because he is not a canon he wasn't supposed to to be he was supposed the the spider that bit him came from another universe yeah. and that was supposed 42. to bite a spider-man yeah, universe 42 and it was supposed to bite some someone from there and then they would have been the spider person of that universe uh but all because of the spot and creating the super collider and the first movie and you know work with kingpin and stuff like that which gave him his own powers but because uh miles was bit by that spider peter parker spider-man of the ultimate uh, of miles's universe uh died and because he would have ended up saving the day um had it not been miles being bit by that spider um but he dies and now miles is a spider-man of his own universe but the other universe doesn't have any spider person at all um and then 2099's entire motivation uh miguel's motivation is that he stumbled upon a universe where his family was not dead um, because in his own universe, his, his wife and child are dead, but he found the universe where his family is still alive and the alternate version of himself was killed. So he found himself, he found himself dead, but was able to pick up uh, right where the, his dead self left off. So no one noticed that he died. So he was able to be with this alternate version of his family and he discovered, or at least he believes that because he interfered with a canon event, that his family was supposed to die, or that he was supposed to be dead in this universe, that caused uh, a collapse in the universe or something of that nature, where everything collapsed in on itself. An, an, an entire universe uh, collapsed, essentially, the entire Spider-Verse or the 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 universe that specific universe supposedly collapsed because mm-hmm. of because of that. Um, it's interesting because so I didn't 
this is something that I missed in the from the first movie. Like so, when, when if if you, I sh- I gave you the picture of the spider, um, okay. yeah. So I miss I kind of mi- glossed over. It. I didn't miss it. But I kind of glossed over it because I just thought it was because of the scene or whatever. But like you remember, it glitches. This the spider glitches the way it's yeah like, yeah when it's it's uh, and I completely glossed over that. Um and. And it's I, I I found the detail their attention to detail really cool. Uh, for that because, like you, and me I don't know about you, but in the moment you probably don't think anything of it, right? It just glitching. It's like oh whatever. It's, it's probably just part of the animation right. and it's right it's part of the art style. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it and it, it, and when they talk about these. Things remember, and then you remember, like you know, with the way you you glitch when you're not you're not in your right universe, and then they talk about this, like that spider was not supposed to be there, uh, it was there by accident, and it's like, and then you're like, holy shit, that is fucking awesome! Like they thought this out really well. It was just cool. It was just really cool how well it's it, the, the details were so well put together. Um, that they show that spider then going into Miles and bite and they're biting him. And yeah, it wasn't supposed to bite him. It was supposed to be in a different universe biting that universe's Peter Parker. Uh so yeah, that was just really neat. I just when I thought about that back from uh the first movie, it's like holy hell, I completely glossed over that. And this movie makes you it's kind of it gives you kind of a mind blowing thought. Like, holy shit, man, that is awesome. Uh, so yeah, I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, I meant to watch uh, Into the Spider Verse before um, watching this movie, just just as a refresher because it'd been a few years since I had seen it, and um, you know it's a great movie, so why not? But I just didn't have time um, mess around and just like, oopsie, I can't, I don't have time for this today. But um, one one of the weird things was um, like I was trying to remember. If the scientist who is turned out to be the spot in this movie, if he was actually in the last movie, because I don't remember, yeah, that'll be interesting to go back to look for. Because I, yeah. actually, I, I actually saw the I watched Into the Spider Verse like a week or two ago, um, just because I my uh, my girlfriend hadn't seen it yet, and um, and we watched it together because she I wanted her to watch it because I knew it was coming out and I figured she would want to come with me. Um, so we watched that, and and again, I I completely glossed over the fact that the spider is uh, glitching, and I'll I'll have to watch it. That's a good point. Just go back and see if if he's there, like in that little station or whatever. If you had, yeah, because he he plays uh, like if you know, just like he says in this movie, it's really his fault that all of this is happening. Um, between him bringing that spider in from the other universe over and that caused everything to happen with miles getting his powers spot getting his powers peter parker of this universe dying and then all of this uh drama with with uh all of these other universes so i actually want to go back to that part as well um with miguel and do you think that the what he's trying to do because like at the end of the movie um you know the miles is you know he's telling miles that yeah you have to let this happen it's a canon event um if you don't allow it to happen the entire universe is going to collapse um so the idea is miguel and all of the spider people including gwen are trying to stop well not including gwen but trying to stop miles from going back to his universe to save his dad because it's supposed to be a canon event that his dad dies, but Miles doesn't want to go go by that. He wants to save his dad, and that's where you get Gwen feeling uh, feeling uh, uh, sympathy, and you get Hobie feeling sympathy, and Peter, and so on, and they all start helping him uh, until you get to the end of the movie. But do you think right now we're a year away from the next movie uh, that Miguel is right that? he's actually doing this because he even tried to convince everyone like we're the good guys at the end of the way we're we're doing we're doing the right thing right trying to convince everyone else um do you think that 
what he's what mild or excuse me what miguel um learned when he interacted with his family caused what happened or if there's something else and miguel is just mistaken i think he'll be mistaken um i think that's what they're going towards um and that miles is correct that like the right thing isn't to do that like um and I think we'll find out eventually, like, it wasn't necessarily maybe a, a a mistake that he became Spider-Man somehow, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think it'll come out that Miguel is wrong and what they're doing is wrong, essentially. All the stuff that they did is wrong. Um, because the interesting to, to think about, too, is because uh, when he saves Inspector Singh, so he was technically supposed to die, right? Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen with that? Is something going to happen to Mumbathon? Like, are they going to start certain things going to start happening that shouldn't have happened, like bad things? So that's something to consider as well. Wasn't that um, happening the other... in the movie when they uh, after that happened? It wasn't like a, a a small team of spider people. Like there was like a, a like a big black thing that showed up in the in the movie, and they they had like all this tech with them. You remember that part? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I that's one thing I'll have to when I rewatch it, I'll have to really pay attention to because I can't I, I I can't remember if they ever referenced anything about Mbathan again, uh, because obviously he's part of because he's because uh, uh, so so this is Spider Man from India. He's just called Spider Man. Um, it, it, I think he was part of the final team, right? For um. That he joins Peter, right? Or not right, yeah. Miles, right? They, they got the old gang back. The uh, and then Spider Man Spider Noir and Penny um, and Spider Ham, and then uh, assuming Hobie will be on that team with Gwen and um, Spider Man from India. Yeah, yeah. So they because they um, they're going to help Miles essentially fight the Spider Society uh, to save his dad, um, or. To yeah, to not not spite fight the spider society, but like the event that's supposed to cause his dad's death, they're gonna try to help prevent that from happening. Um, yeah, I think I, I that's my guess. I don't know. I, I like. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I think it's. Um, I do also think that Miguel might be mistaken because it's he made this entire team the whole suspirator society the whole gathering of all of these different spiders based off of one occurrence of right. one thing happening that could have been just a coincidence um especially given uh which we'll also get into this uh shortly but everything else is happening in the marvel universe um this could have been a coincidence of that universe collapsing at the same time that he was there doing something he probably shouldn't have been doing, but it wasn't the cause. Um, so one of the weird things in this movie, because normally I wouldn't even um, like, at least I try not to refer to MCU things uh, when we're looking at stuff that is not made by Marvel studios. So um, if we're talking about, Punisher War Zone, for instance, that's not an MCU movie. It was made right. not by Marvel Studios, so I wouldn't count it as that or Morbius or the Venom movies or things like that. I would like, oh, those are Marvel movies, but they're made by Sony or they're made by Fox. So it's not the Marvel Studios. Uh, it doesn't count. Or it's an alternate universe. So it does count as a Marvel movie, obviously, like Elektra or Daredevil or whatever, but it's not. MCU because that's one timeline made by Marvel Studios and stuff like that. But we have several things in this movie where we're like direct references to the MCU as well as other universes. And uh, I think one of those things uh, was when the spot was getting all those power ups and he was uh, learning how his abilities were working. He ended up traveling to live action. I think this was the first live action, right? from in the mm -hmm. movie the right. first well, live action only, sequence yeah the only live action of all the of the entire both movies i believe 
Uh, no, oh, no, the, no, no, the, the other there's... one was Aaron Davis. Aaron Davis, uh, right. aka uh, Dan, Donald Glover. He's uh, he was live action as the Prowler. Uh, right, and I don't right. know if that he's. I don't know if he's supposed to be from the MCU or if he's just a different version of another uh, universe's uh, Prowler. Uh, but, right, right. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Yeah, so seeing um, so if anyone hadn't watched any of the Venom movies, uh, this is Mrs. Chen. She owns or runs this uh, convenience store uh, in I'm assuming San Francisco, right? Because that's where the Venom movies yeah, are. That's where Venom. Uh, that's where the Venom is uh, placed in, in San Fran. And uh, yeah, she has interacted with Eddie Brock, and interacted with Eddie Brock as Venom, and she. Like she is fully aware of what Venom looks like, acts like, talks like, what he does, and so on. So in this instance, uh, the spot just shows up, fully animated spot, pops up mm -hmm. right in front of her, and she is completely unfazed. Like she's right. seen it all already. So a animated person uh, popping up in the middle of her store doesn't face her whatsoever. Um, she's completely cool by it. It's just like, whatever, just a Tuesday. And uh, they're just having this conversation as he's discovering that he has the ability to go from universe to universe. Right. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, they, they added that in, uh, that scene in. And then obviously the other one being uh, when she's and don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back in uh, Earth. What was it nine one nine 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 nine? Um, so that's the other when he mentions it, the direct reference to MCU. Um, so and that does that's what's supposed to be a direct reference to MCU. So uh, it's I think I think it's it's intriguing at the very least, and I think I think I think we'll to get back to him if who's right and wrong i definitely like i think they're going towards that miles is going to end up being right and there and these events are not necessarily uh the events that happen are not necessarily because something went out of order uh one way or another um so yeah we'll be i guess we'll other thing will be interesting to see if they mention anything about the multiverse of madness in the next movie like because obviously that was also kind of going through dimensions as well. So I wonder if they'll make a reference to that somehow. Yeah, and that's what that's kind of where I was getting at. I was thinking that the universe that Miguel was on that collapsed on itself might have actually been an incursion that was incurring uh, coincidentally yeah, while he was there. So right. that brings that into Doctor Strange and what's going on with that and also Secret Wars. Um, in the future, because uh, I, and, you know, seeing that, hearing that, and then, you know, this whole scene, which was I didn't even realize was in the trailer until we had just played it right now. I was like, oh, he actually said this in the trailer. Holy cow. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just completely went past me until just now. Um, but also the the they use direct imagery, too. So when he was uh -huh. explaining the Spider-Verse is what they were calling it is what miles called it it was literally just the the way that timeline was depicted in the loki series uh when they were getting ex explanations of how um the sacred sacred timeline works as well as all of the branching timelines and so on and i was like wow it's just like they really are using the exact same imagery here as the MCU, though this is not an MCU movie. But I guess, I mean, it's a, still a Marvel Universe movie because it's all on, technically on that timeline. It's just, just technically a branch off the timeline. The sacred timeline is the big one. So uh -huh. all of the Spider-Man's, you know, Homecoming, Tom Holland, all that stuff is on the big timeline. And then this is on a branching one. So still they use all of the same imagery i'm like wow they are using mcu stuff that's but it's not marvel studios but maybe they are getting some stuff from marvel studios here because they're clearly 
are using the same imagery and uh, they just didn't use the word variant, right? They didn't use that terminology. They didn't uh, right. invoke the TVA at this point or anything like that, right, but right. they're still um, talking about this stuff. But w what was actually funny to me, uh, especially going back to this, them actually, so when, when this happened, when he said this, I actually, again, watching this, I was like, oh, they're, they're not talking. There's a Doctor Strange reference. Why would he say that? But he's not talking about MCU Doctor Strange because that Earth is Earth 616 as referred to in Multiverse of Magnus as the right. MCU is Earth 616. But we already talked about the, how how that was incorrect, right? That right. 616 is the comic book right. universe and the movies have their own designation. This is the movie designation. The Right. At least what we knew going into Multiverse of Madness. But I find that funny that Sony has corrected Marvel. Yeah, that's what I said before. Like, I, I, it's interesting yeah. that they mentioned that. And I, I'm wondering if they're correcting it. And I wonder if MCU will reference it at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as we're going around in these phases. So that it's, it's, it's fun. It, it'll be interesting to pay attention to that. If, if that corrects it because like when he talks about originally when he says dr strange i thought multiverse of madness but then he says the nerd so he's like okay he's specifically talking about tom holland spider um he's not talking about because like why would he like if he's sticking to spider people like it makes sense that he's talking about no way home um so yeah it's it's definitely i think if, like i said it makes sense that that would be that's what the earth would be called for mcu not 616 because like i said when right when they said 616 you and i like that doesn't make sense right like, you know you're a different universe than the comic books you're not you're the you're the marvel cinematic universe you're a different completely different universe and you should not be 616 but yeah um it'll be interesting to me at least if mcu now references it and maybe corrects it or something like that yeah, I think they probably went with 616 because it's more familiar. And, like, look, I mean, look how many numbers. Like, how, if they wanted to yeah. refer to this as the MCU, that's a mouthful to just to say that all the time. So I think they right. went with 616 because it's easier. But um, at the end of the day, I think if that was the goal, I think they should, instead of, if they're going to give the MCU a designation, instead of giving it that, you know, one nine 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 that this is too much to say either give it a new number that's really short like call it mm -hmm. earth one earth zero something like that or uh since this does sound very dc because that's how dc comics yeah. rolls with their prime stuff earth prime earth one earth zero um they can go with like an acronym or just a short very short word something like that something easy to say um whatever obviously i wouldn't call the mcu earth mcu because they would mean movie characters referring to themselves as movie characters would make no sense but just uh something that's easy to for everyone to understand and clear it all up i think would be um best going forward right and it's it's, it's also important to remember because um they, they do show tom hardy's Venom going into MCU universe too, uh, right, in yeah. that post credit scene. So it's somehow all connected in some way. Mm -hmm. Like how important is the connection? Maybe they'll delve into that. But yeah, yeah, definitely something to uh, keep your eye out for as we get more into the phases for MCU and as they in the next season next year when they bring out Beyond the Spider Verse. Um, do you have any other thoughts on the movie? Um, I just want to be one more, do one more nerd thing because I just felt like saying it. Uh, still on this designation thing. So Sony is like correcting Marvel by calling it the actual designation is supposed to be. Um, mm -hmm. But they also kind of goofed on their own because at the beginning of the movie, we have Gwen's origin and they called it Earth 6 5. Earth 6 5 is the universe that Gwen is from, but that's the comic book version of it not the movie version because that's different so they should have given the movie version a different designation like call it 165 or something like that um but that's 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 all i'm i'm done
Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a wrap for the show. But yeah, we just, again, you know, we want to thank everyone for talking with us for the past over past year uh, that we've been doing this. Obviously, thank you a lot to Aldo. Uh, obviously, he started out producing for us. And then in general, everything he's done with the promo videos, uh, the the intro video that he put together, the graphics that he's put together for us. Yeah. All Everything that he's done to support us, it's been amazing. Aldo is one of the best people out there. Um, so really appreciate it to him. I was appreciate it to the bar room in general uh, for, for supporting us and, and, and allowing us to be part of this uh, platform and, and talking about the things that we're passionate about. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone uh, involved. And Carl, thank you. Thank you for joining me when i thought about doing this and wanted you know i said hey, i need another i need a co-host and uh maybe like i said down the line who knows maybe we'll when life is a little more less busy or something uh, for me at least and uh we can redo this but but yeah just thank you for you to you as well uh did you have any final thoughts or yeah i also have my my thank yous as well uh, thank you aldo for um for giving me opportunity as well as you salim for uh putting me on for thinking about me uh this is not something i ever uh thought about doing but once the opportunity was came i was like wow that would be really sweet and uh just i've always wanted an outlet to, to be nerdy and talk about movies or talk about comics or talk about even you know, my toys briefly which yeah i still do that but um still being able to actually ex exchange with someone like when we first were talking about uh, the show when we met up and went to that uh that bar downtown that was just us chatting about nerdy stuff and i hadn't done that in so long with anyone uh mm -hmm. so the uh, the podcast was just a really great outlet and also even exposed me to uh, some things that I hadn't watched or hadn't experienced in um, like Jurassic Park. I hadn't watched any of the Jurassic World movies um, and just watching all of those. I was like, yeah, I missed out on all of this stuff and I wouldn't have even watched it if it wasn't for science fiction and uh, just getting me more exposed to things. Um, but yeah, just uh, you believing that i was uh the best match for for this i uh, appreciate that i appreciate aldo for uh, not only allowing me on the platform but uh showing me the ropes so i can do all of the the stuff um uh, controlling all of this and and entrusting me with that and teaching me that and um uh, just he's very wise very um uh, very knowledgeable on this industry and and um, I definitely thank everyone from Bar Room, whether you are uh, a host on a different show or uh, all of those watching at home and just commenting and stuff. You guys are awesome. Um, I really do appreciate everyone that came and showed up and um, that checked out every show every week and uh, shared it and, and did all the things because, uh, yeah, this was really cool. Um, and it is unfortunate that we are uh ending here like we are but like uh salim said like we're still kind of open to doing this more in the future if things work out um but right now it's just not a good time it's just it's not working out the way that uh it should and i know we we, we like some growth and some consistency and some um some more uh, some more content, regular content um, and stuff like that, but it's just not the right time for us. So um, we got to take a bow right now, but again, this has been great and uh, appreciate everything. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's a wrap for us. Obviously, if you missed uh, any previous shows, we'll still be up on the Barroom Network. You can listen to them on all on the uh, on YouTube uh, under the Barroom Network and then all your major and minor podcast platforms and obviously please continue to support the Barroom uh, offers a lot of great content on Chicago sports um, a lot of great people a lot of great hosts that do um, amazing things and uh, knowledgeable as well to keep you updated on everything that's going on but 
yeah, that's it. A wrap for us. Uh, we will see you guys hopefully another time. But uh, yeah, thank you again every for everyone that's always tuned in and supported us. Uh, that's about it. All right. Adios.